Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Sports Week here on STV. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Mark Warburton says Rangers are not that bad. Celtic boosted by the return of four stars. And Hamden wants the Europa League or Super Cup final in 2019. Lots to discuss on the programme tonight, as ever on a Friday. It's an extended programme. Uh, Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. I'm delighted to see our boot room guest is a very special guest. Indeed, it's the Hibs Chief Executive, Leanne Dempster. Uh, Leanne, delighted to have you here um, to talk uh, all things Hibs and maybe get your thoughts on uh, Scottish football in a broader sense as well. Um, first and foremost, um, good time to be the Hibs Chief Executive because everything looks rosy in the garden. Certainly, uh, we are uh, we are on target at the moment for the for the uh, the automatic promotion spot, but um, we're not um, we're not taking anything for granted. But it, it's been a good time to be at the club, and, uh, and and I've certainly enjoyed it. And it's been a good season so far, a good season to date. But as we keep saying, and I keep saying to everybody in the club, we have to keep our feet firmly on the ground and just be focusing on the end goal for us, which is getting back to the Premier League. Yeah, was that the remit that was uh, just basically put down on the table to, to Neil Lennon when you when you recruited him? It was pretty straightforward. We've, uh, we need to get promoted, and we've talked about that uh, you know, al almost since the day I walked through the door. So when we were looking for a new manager over the summer, it was pretty straightforward. The priority for us is to be promoted, and we have to throw everything we can at it, everything, every ounce of energy at the club, at the board, supporters, everybody together to get ourselves promoted. And we're doing that at the minute, so we just keep keep that momentum going, keep that focus going and just keep winning every match. Mm, I mentioned to you, Neil, there, has he, <coughs> has he surprised you? Did you know what you were getting? Was there something else about him that you thought, oh, I didn't realise that about him? Well, when we were looking, when Alan decided that he was going to go down south, I mean, um, it was it was a genuine surprise, really. I didn't think I thought that Alan would have uh, stayed with the club and tried uh, with us to get the promotion this year. But when Alan made the decision to go down south, we had to move really quickly, as you know, to try and get a new manager in. I think for me, one of the things that was evident is that we needed somebody who had Scottish experience, and obviously Neil's got that in in spades. So um, when it became obvious that Neil um, was certainly interested in having a conversation, that was something that we wanted to do. And when I met him, he was a really he's a really impressive guy. Um, we had a couple of hours conversation myself and George and after leaving there it was almost the way that it was with Alan before once you'd met that person you can you knew straight away that that was the person that you really wanted and if I'm honest it didn't take <coughs> too much for you know ourselves and Neil to get together and get into a place where he felt that he could uh, join Hibs. Yeah was it important the psychology uh, to get someone who replicated what Alan Stubbs had as a player as well you know Neil Lennon has it in spades as you mentioned the experience of Scottish football you know he was a certain type of player never said the attitude but as a manager you know he had that winning mentality I mean the early word that we had when when he was trying to implement his ideas as some people were thinking well, wait a minute this is relentless well, he's, uh, I mean, he's, you've seen it all through his career. He saw, saw it when he was a, a player, he saw it as a manager. He's absolutely determined, you know, and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't ex accept any excuses at all. You know, he doesn't look for pitches or anything or injuries or whatever to get into the way. He just basically, you know, he knows what he needs to do and just gets on with it. And that for us is, uh, that that is just what we need as a club. And he works well with us. Um, he understands the club and I think he was impressed by the club when he came in. Obviously he knew about us, he'd played against us, uh, he'd been in Scotland for a long time. But when he came to the training centre, when he, I, mean, I think when he saw the, the, the kind of bigger club, if you like, I think he really realised at that point uh, you know, the, the, the kind of size and depth of the club that he joined and, uh, and was you know, even happier to be with us. So it's, it's been a good, good start for all of us and we just hope that we can keep it going. Mm. I was going to say one of one of the pleasing things. Uh, I don't know if you've been surprised by it is the the attendance. You know the, the supporters coming back and the numbers that they're coming back in. Uh, this is, the attendance actually even since relegation has been good, but certainly in the last this part of this season has been absolutely excellent. We're averaging something around fifteen and a half thousand at the minute, just north of fifteen and a half thousand. Unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable, and supporters have been great from the minute we were relegated when they had the chance to. Uh, show their dis uh, disquiet with that. What they did is they bought season tickets and they started buying tickets. And obviously, it was a whole new bunch of folk. I was new at the club. George, new management team. Um, 
you know, there was a lot for, I think, supporters to kind of buy into. And I'm hoping that over the, uh, the course of the time that we've been there, we've been able to demonstrate that, you know, that some of the ideas and the, the, the kind of directions that we're taking the club in are positive and that we're trying to, you know, the old adage of build something for, fu for the future. But I would say um, the supporters have been immense since the minute that we came through the door in this year. Just, you know, uh, coming the game tomorrow, you know, we'll, you know, we'll have six, maybe 15,500, 16,000 in the stadium tomorrow. It'd be wonderful. Yeah. I mean, what does the Scottish <coughs> Cup win done for the club, both off the field and on the field? I mean, let's not pretend. We didn't get, rel uh, sorry, we didn't get promoted last season, so that was a massive disappointment. And to go from uh, not being promoted to straight into the Scottish Cup, Final, you know, within the course of you know less than a week was uh, was 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 always going to be difficult for us, but the energy that the Scottish Cup has brought, just because of the nature of the time and the ribbon that supporters have got and the club has got over the, over those years, it hasn't stopped yet. And I, you know, I don't think people will look back in that year with real pride. Supporters will look back in that year with real pride at particular points, probably when we you know the the, the uh, when we were behind at Tynecastle was probably the catalyst for that. Um, um, and undoubtedly it's brought more supporters, it's brought them forward to buy season tickets, about 11,500 season tickets at the moment. Um, but the, just the general air around the club is one of positivity and the cup has undoubtedly added to that. And, you know, and well, I, I don't think we can pretend otherwise. Yeah, and, and the one downside to it is <coughs> almost the, 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 the part that in some ways could have tarnished it. Did, was the trouble afterwards? Do you feel as if the club now has completely answered all the questions for the police and satisfied them with regards to uh, the people that let the club down? Well, they, I mean, supporters should know that they should not go into the field to play that. You know, whether it's a cup final, whether it's a you know a local game, whatever it might well be, shouldn't go into the field to play. And some of the supporters that went on to the field to play that day, um, our own supporters, and you know, when I say supporters, I mean all supporters, uh, let themselves down. And when that happens. Um, you know, and the, uh, th there are any acts, any criminal acts, for example, um, perpetrated, then the police will do what they always do, which is they will deal with that. And we had to go through a process with the, uh, uh, with the authorities, if you like, to unpick the events of that, un unpick the events of that day. So, um, you know, it was a, it's been a, it was a difficult time over the summer because there was a lot of scrutiny, scrutiny on the club, un un uh, undoubtedly. Um, and I think as far as Police Scotland is concerned. I mean, the, I think the investigation is still ongoing, but most most of the people who got themselves involved in things they ought not to have done that day, the criminal acts, um, have uh, you know have been brought to some kind of uh, justice for that or court. Yeah, um, there was a little bit of a <coughs> bad uh, cross exchange with regards to Rangers um, and and some of their players. Did you feel as if there was something that needed to be mended with them? Is there a bad feeling there, or has that been has that all been completely solved? I don't think it in terms of it being a bad feeling as such. I mean, it was a difficult day, obviously, um, not the pitch invasion and the, uh, the events after that. Um, you know, I've got, you know, there's good relations with Rangers. There have been good relations with Rangers. You know, actually, the chief exec there, uh, MD there, Stuart Robertson, is a guy that I worked with for a number of years at Motherwell, so I know him really well. So, you know, that's what I've learned in the game. You can't, ha you don't hang on to these things. You've got to move on. You know, clubs need to work together. And um, I would say that the relationship, certainly from a board perspective, and one to one with, with Rangers is um, probably back to where it was before the cup final. It, it was difficult. There's no point pretending otherwise. You know, it, 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 it did definitely push things somewhat between the clubs. But the they made their feelings known, as did we, and I think that's just what happens. Yeah, um, Ruffy, and, and obviously <coughs> Leanne, we're going to talk um, after the break about uh, some other issues which I think Hibs fans might be interested in your comments on. Um, uh, but Ruffy, eight points clear at the top of the table, suddenly you've got halves mm -hmm. on the horizon. You know, some people are suggesting it could be could be a double this season again. I think if Hibs, if Hibs win the league and the cup, <laughs> you'll need to just wipe yeah. out Leith for the rest of the summer. <laughs> no, I think it's good to have that uh, points advantage. We, I think we all thought that Dundee United, Falkirk were going to make it a lot, lot harder. I'm sure they will. I don't think Neil will take anything for granted. There's no done and dusted yet. So uh, the championship has always for me being the most exciting league in the last two or three years, you know, with what's been going Absolutely. on. So, and, and I think it'll be the same this year as well. Yeah, um, and your prediction while Leanne's here so that she can take it away with her on the, on the, the Derby game? Uh, the Derby game, I'll uh, hit to win, obviously. 
Yeah, okay. Uh, never one to alienate yourself from any guest on this programme. Um, we are going to talk more with Leanne Dempster about Hibs after the break. Uh, then we'll hear from uh, Neil Lennon himself on uh, the game against A United and, of course, the forthcoming game against Hearts. And we're also going to discuss Rangers. It's the hot topic at the moment after that 4-1 uh, hammering from Hearts at Tyne Castle. Uh, more than a few Rangers fans are unhappy with what's happening on the park and some disgruntled fans about what's happening off the park we'll discuss Rangers and then look at the weekend fixtures as well Leanne Dempster will be back with us after the break Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Sports Week. Alan Ruff is alongside me here and I'm delighted that the Chief Executive of Hibernian Football Club, Leanne Dempster, uh, is still with us on the programme to talk about uh, Hibs, the bid for the Championship and of course in that January transfer window uh, there was a, a few players that Neil Lennon was looking to try and recruit. How close were you, Leanne, to getting the Anthony Stokes deal over the line? Yeah, I mean, we were made aware that Anthony might be available um, uh, at the start of this week and um, when we heard that that we obviously decided that was something if we could do that we would like to try and do that uh, we didn't have a lot of time to do it it wasn't something if I'm being honest that we were wholly expecting but you know when you get the opportunity to, to sign a player possibly sign a player of Anthony's quality that you have to try and make that happen so we worked hard to try and get it over the line we really did work and I think we, we nearly got there but we just uh, ran out of time at the end of the day I think it came towards us too late um, we were happy, I think, with the, the business that we'd done in January. We'd done it nice and early, as, as we'd done in previous years as well. So it wasn't as if we were running into the kind of last few days of the transfer window desperately looking for players to sign. It would have had to be a player that was going to add something different to the squad. Neil was absolutely adamant about that, something that we didn't have, and Anthony absolutely came into that, into that um, category. So um, we did try, never managed it, but I don't think we, uh, I don't, you know, we've got a very strong squad, I think, at the moment, and we've got some great players at the minute. And uh, we did, as I say, we did our business early, getting uh, Chris in. And uh, obviously we've had, uh, we've brought Scott in as well in terms of goalkeeping cover. So, I mean, we're content and happy with the squad going forward. Mm. And just picking up on that point, you, you mentioned time was against you. So there w in your mind, there wasn't anything else financially in the background that's covered it? Not really, I don't think. I mean, there's always issues when you're having a conversation about money. Of course there is, but um, it, it, I think it was more... The, to do for me, it was to do with the fact that it came towards us late, really late in the transfer window. When these things happen, it's hard to get them over the, over the line if you're talking about a matter of sort of 24, 36 hours. Yeah. There's a lot of things that you need to kind of line up and uh, we, just couldn't, we just couldn't make it happen. And in contrast to that, Commons deal looked as if it was abundantly clear, <laughs> you know, from a long period out. I mean, I thought it was an absolute shoe and, you know, he scores in his last game. Um, was he keen? What scuppered that deal? I mean, um, Chris came in. I mean, we needed Chris at a point. We wanted Chris at a point where we were struggling a little bit with injuries. Chris came in and, and, and played five matches for us and did fantastically well. And again, that was one I think we would have done if we could have continued. Um, but I think we knew pretty much early on that that was going to be more difficult to do um, because the nature of the, the discussions had been around the kind of uh, loan for a shorter period of time and I think when you're getting into a situation where it's for a longer period of time and a player's coming out of contract at the end of it, these things complicate matters so I think we knew probably maybe a week, ten days after um, Chris had went back to Celtic that that one was going to be unlikely. Again, it falls into that category of it would be, if it's something we could do, we would want to do um, uh, but that doesn't detract from the squad and the recruitment that we did through, the, through January yeah, um, I'm going to talk about a couple of things before we obviously hear from Neil Lennon, then we'll uh, move on to other clubs, much to your relief. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, as far as Hibs are concerned, I always, you know, when I was working as a reporter there, there was a period where Hearts were developing young players non-stop and they just seemed to have a conveyor belt. Then it went in cycles, you know, and Hibs just had a batch of players coming through that were just, you know, everybody was after them. And, do you feel as if the structure of the club is such now that there are young players there that that, that four or five year plan that you've got will come through? I do and I mean that was part of the reason that myself and George and others were recruited to the club because it was obvious that you know some things at the club weren't working as well as, as they could and they needed to be joined up so um, youth development uh, was absolutely one of those things. George Craig who heads up 
football operations, brought in Eddie May, restructured everything that sits in the background. And actually, um, we've, got, we've, we've got a great batch of young players coming through at the minute, many of whom have tied down in sort of much longer term deals now, and we're delighted to have been able to do that. So you take an example of a, we've got a young man called Ryan Portius at the minute. He's on a development loan at Edinburgh City. He's a defender, he's playing every single week in the leagues. And uh, by all accounts, he's one of the first names uh, on the team sheet. So uh, he's getting the opportunity to play with us in the development league, and he's getting the opportunity to play for Edinburgh City. So he'll get the, you know, he'll get 50 games this season. Yeah. Um, the last question I'm going to ask you, which again is cup match coming up. Um, you've won the Scottish Cup, so that monkey's off the back. You're now in a situation where you've mentioned that league's the priority. But those Hibs fans will be desperate for a for a for another crucial win against your great rivals in the in the Scottish Cup again. Well, it's I mean the the idea that we're playing Hearts at Tynecastle in the Scottish Cup it throws up every every image you, you you can imagine, and of course everybody in the city is looking forward to it. Everybody's desperate to get a ticket and attend that day, and it's, it'll be a great day. Hearts are a good side. We're a good side. There's always that edge to a derby match. It's the Scottish Cup as well. We are the holders. We are going to Tynecastle. It's going to be an interesting. Uh, an interesting uh, match. It's going to be tight, tough to call. Um, but I'll also say I think it's good for the city and it's good for the two clubs because I think in general terms you're talking about two clubs that are on the up, albeit in different divisions at the minute, but we're talking about two clubs that are on the up. So that's a good thing for us, a good thing for Hearts and hopefully a good thing for, for Edinburgh as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's coming up on the horizon. Of course, <coughs> Neil Lennon mentioned the fact that you know players have to focus on the game against the United because if they don't, they won't be playing against Hearts. Pretty simple. If they don't focus on this weekend, they won't play the following weekend because um, the priority is the league and it's a huge opportunity for us to stretch our advantage before you know other teams play. So it's important we hammer home that advantage while we're ahead. I mean, we did all we could to you know get Anthony Stokes in on the final day, but uh, it wasn't to be. So um, no blame apportioned to anyone on our side of it anyway. So. We wanted to bring another striker in if we could, but we couldn't in the end, couldn't get the deal done. Um, but no, I'm pretty pretty happy. I mean, the squad seems to have sort of settled. You know, it would be nice to get another body in, and maybe we will even after the window shuts now, but um, no, I'm pretty pleased with what I've got. OK, um, so Air United to come, Ruffy, I think the priority for us is before Leanne leaves here is just work out the ticket allocation for ourselves. I mean, that's the priority <laughs> rather than anyone else. I wouldn't like to hold a breath on it. Um, Leanne, stick with us. Before we go, we'll get uh, a question or two before we hit the break. Um, Ruffy, I've got to talk about Rangers because, quite simply, um, it's the hot topic. He's feeling the pressure. Uh, Mark Warburton clearly... Um, coming under closer scrutiny now after that defeat to Hearts. Yeah, and I think he realises now that he's going to come under that uh, bit of pressure when Rangers lose heavily. He said, I think one of his quotes were, we, Rangers don't lose four goals, you know, and quite right, you know, and I think he has to do something about it. But as we've all discussed about it, you would have thought he would, with the experience he's got, he'd have done something about it now because it's been there for everybody to see the defence, particularly the two central boys. Anything comes into the box, it's a, it's a panic station. And then he's got an experienced player sitting on the bench who he brought in there. So it remains to be seen whether he's given a chance at the weekend. Yeah, well, he came out fighting yesterday. I mean, obviously now I think he's realising the demands and the expectations of being the Rangers manager. I mean, um, if I could put it in perspective, uh, second place has always been the remit. It's hard to believe that some actual uh, journalists suggested Rangers would win the league. Mark Warburton's been um, defined throughout that second place is the key for them. But suddenly now uh, people are looking at his record in away games as well. And uh, it was put to him yesterday. It was a problem with big games. I don't see it as a big problem. We went to Aberdeen, I felt dominated and should have won the game. You know, we've gone to all these various other, Inverness, Partick, uh, Dundee, Motherwell, where we've gone to, we won games of football very convincingly. The Parkhead game was well documented. Um, Hearts, we had two bad performances. It's just as simple as that. And we then played the same teams at Ibox and were very convincing in what we did. Well, you've got to dissect managers and what they say, Ruffy. I'm going to show you the graphic now. It's it's not necessarily getting wins away at certain other clubs, and I don't want to be disparaging towards the size of them, but the away games against the top four sides, if you have a look right now, uh, this is where uh, quite a lot of people are looking and saying, well, that's the championship. That was his away record against the top four sides. Then you move on to um, the premiership and the top four sides there, and suddenly uh, that record is just not good enough for Rangers fans. 
No, and I think if he's honest enough, he would say as well that they should have done better in their particular games. But as you said there, he has a target now. He's openly saying Europe is where Rangers want to be at the end. And as they are they now, that there's every chance that they'll be there. Yeah, well, um, let me put this timeline to you, Ruffy, and you can tell me um, whether you agree with it or not. I think that the next few games coming up, Ross County, Morton, Dundee, Inverness, St Johnson, got to win them. Uh, yeah. I, I, don't think, I don't even think draws will be tolerated before they hit Celtic on March the 12th. And then you've got the Old Firm game, which brings its own pressures. And suddenly from that, if they don't finish second, I think a lot of Rangers fans will be one calling yeah. for the manager's head and then looking at Dave King. Yeah, well, they'll be looking at, oh, firstly, the, the Celtic game, which is always a massive game, and uh, they'll be looking at the difference in the points as well. But as I'm sure if Leanne uh, was honest enough, he, he would have sat down with the board at the beginning and there'll be a target. And uh, if he meets the targets that were there at the beginning of the season, he'll be OK. I don't know what these targets are, but if he doesn't, then obviously questions have to be asked. Yeah, strangely enough, in this city, uh, Ruffy, you know the way that revolves, you know, even if he gets second, I think a lot of people are now starting to look at the, the games against Celtic. Sometimes they can yeah. make or break you. Yeah, I mean, Leanne's touched on it as well. You know, it's it's the progress, you know, and, and, and the quotes like, you know, we're ahead of where we were, you know, and, and some people will be looking at the team and saying, well, I don't agree with anything you're saying there. OK, you can give us your thoughts on that at Peter and Ruffy on Twitter. I'd like to thank Leanne Dempster for taking the time to come in here and talk Hibs. Hopefully uh, you get a few questions answered. We wish them well for the rest of the season. We're back after the break. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Sports Week. Alan Ruff is with me, Peter Martin, here in the studio. Um, delighted that uh, Leanne Dempster joined us on the programme. Um, and of course, you could see the smile on her face. She didn't want to stay with us for too long, Ruffy. I mean, you can only tolerate us for an hour at the best. I didn't want to push it that far. No, nope, I thought it was very interesting. Uh, it's good to, to hear somebody who's not only got the club's interest at heart, but Scottish football. Uh, she's interested in everything that's happening. Uh, associated to, to football and that's good that we have somebody in, the, in that power. OK, uh, we discussed Hibs in the Championship. Of course, there's uh, uh, a full weekend of fixtures. Join us on uh, STV for the uh, Saturday football show at 2 o'clock, if you can. We'll keep you, keep you up to date with all the goals going in uh, across all four divisions in Scotland. Here's what's happening in the Premiership in Scotland uh, tomorrow. Uh, Motherwell against Hearts is the early kick-off. It's Aberdeen, Partick Thistle, Hamilton, Kilmarnock. Inverness, Cali Thistle against Dundee and Rangers against Ross County. And uh, just uh, with that uh, Premiership in mind, let's discuss the Premiership first of all, uh, Ruffy. Um, and quite simply, the Motherwell Hearts game. Mm -hmm. Interesting because uh, Mark McGee has come out and mentioned that uh, he wasn't too happy um, with uh, the game that they had to play on the last day of the transfer uh, window because it really kind of scuffered his chances of getting Nadia Sifsi from mm -hmm. Celtic. Yeah, fair word hearing. Uh, like Leanne was saying, you know, it's not very easy to get uh, deals over the line and that comes into that category. Obviously, if he had a full day to work on that, he might have been able to get him. Uh, obviously, with uh, Scott McDonald, still the Australian thing hanging over that, he must have been worried that maybe something there happened. But it, he's got the two strikers that you keep telling us that will pull him out of the hole it will obviously Scott's suspended that was a good deal you know appealing that uh, <laughs> that appealing that uh, sending off yeah it right? was a good bit of good skullduggery obviously with Scott scoring so yep it, uh, it was a good three points yep um, over and above that uh, I think Stephen Pearson will be a huge bonus for them suddenly in the middle of the park you've got a guy e even at 34 box to box he's still he's still got it you know, mm -hmm. an excellent player to recruit for them yep yeah, you're right box the box and scores goals you know played at the highest level uh, he'll be a massive uh, asset to them in, in the running you know and I'm sure just walking into the dressing room he'll know all the players so that's always a bonus yeah absolutely okay um, who do you see winning that one I mean let, let's look at hearts I mean what a, yeah. what a high uh, they must be on Ruffy because Craig Levine said that uh, you know suddenly um, you know they're going to see the, the real Ian Cathro I, I think and, and to be fair on this one I think if you if you treat the, the the adulation and the the you know the praise and the criticism with the same disdain in this one because mm -hmm. nothing is determined. No. I mean, this is just one game that they defeated Rangers and defeated them well. Yeah. But I think Hearts fans will be looking and saying, okay, 
That's three wins and nine. Let's see what yeah. the longer picture is. Yeah, they'll be looking at the bigger picture, and the bigger picture starts tomorrow. Obviously, at Motherwell, have to win that and then go into the, the Derby game. That's the games that you win, you know, and then you're on a run and you're moving back up into fighting for second and third place, and that's what the supporters will be wanting. That's what Anne Budge will be wanting. She wants progress year on year. So it, if they were to go on some kind of run, I'm sure that'd be good for them. Yeah. Do you think because of the, the transition between one manager to the other, fourth would be acceptable? And Well, they, they lost all these games and got off the pace a wee bit. You know, obviously, they were to go on a run, you know, they would get the bit between their teeth and, and want that second or third, I'm sure they would want to be playing in Europe as well next year, so I think that would be the main target. Yeah, OK. Um, who's winning it? I'm going to go for Hearts. I think Hearts, I think if the, the, the Hearts players can't move on from that fantastic win they had in midweek, it's uh, a bit of a downer. Yeah, OK. Um, now, there's another number of games that uh, I want to get your thoughts on. Aberdeen against uh, Partick Thistle. Partick Thistle, clean sheet again in, in, in midweek. Aberdeen, uh, Derek McInnes is keen to emphasise uh, you, you know, the fact that his team have been on a, a, a good run, OK. Um, they lost to Celtic, but he was keen to highlight the positives. And, and I think mm -hmm. he's the first to admit now it's the battle is on with Rangers. So this is a game that mm -hmm. there can be no slip-ups. No, there can't. It was a reasonable performance against Celtic, although they never threatened very much. Uh, but uh, at home, you know, I think the big players are back again. You know, obviously Hayes is back and McGinn scoring goals. Rooney hasn't been scoring as regular, but uh, I think it'll be a hard one for Partick this one. I'm glad that uh, you, you didn't allow St Johnson that goal during the week there. But uh, unfortunately, they did score. Yeah. Never had a shot at it, unfortunately. OK. Um, don't worry about that. No. You're supposed to be impartial on yeah, this programme, exactly. Robbie. I know. You're right. <clears throat> OK. Um, what about Inverness? Um, Richie Foran has got his work cut out. He says he doesn't fear the sack. Um, mm. What do you make of it? Well, he must be having good meetings with the board. You know, he must have a, a really understanding with the board that... Uh, Sometimes you don't get that kind of time, but he's a new guy coming in there. He's been there a long time. He's worked some kind of rapport with them, and uh, they'll be hoping that they can just get away from that relegation zone. And again, home advantage, that's the ones you have to win, and I think they're getting Dundee at the right time. Yeah, of course, the manager knows exactly what's at stake in Inverness. It's challenging times, that's for sure. There's no hiding that fact, but when you've got the calibre of player that we have, the quality, but now we need the leaders. I need 26 of them. I've spoken to the chairman and it's been great. The first thing he asked me was, how can we help? How can the board help? And we're all together. We're united. I have huge respect for the chairman, the board. They've been fantastic with me. The budget's there, the funds are there. I can go and add more players if I want. So it's, we have a great relationship at the moment and I'm looking forward to you now spending many years here as the manager. Well, um, listen, uh, you know, usually uh, some board members get nervy w when you start hitting the bottom of the table. Uh, Phil March to them and Richie's a good lad. He, he really needs to start producing on the pitch. Yeah, we, we keep talking about resources and budgets. I, I would think Inverness wouldn't have as big a budget as most of the teams are coming up against. But I think the signing of Billy Mackay, if he can produce any kind of form the first time he was up there, you know, he'll be a lifesaver because if they... Give him the right supply, he will score goals. Yeah. Uh, Hamilton Ackies against Kilmarnock is just... Uh, this is... Uh, again, there's no point in saying they're, it's massive because they're all uh, they're all massive, but the win for Ackies in, in midweek, as Michael Devlin mentioned, is, is crucial to them. It gives them the shot in the arm and mm -hmm. they've got to try and back that up, even although you still uh, have them as the team going mm -hmm. down. Well, these are the kind of games that I keep talking about that you've got to win. You know, and I'm talking about Kilmarnock as well. There's no point in picking up three points last week and then losing tomorrow and I think both both teams if, if they can obviously win tomorrow one of them wins tomorrow they could go on a wee run and take them away from that relegation zone so I, I, this is a hard one to call for me OK um, St Johnson against Celtic of course is on the Sunday um, you know having watched the game in midweek where um, you know Derek McInnes thought they should have got a draw I think Celtic were Certainly, the more dangerous in the in the the final third, albeit they got something from a set piece. But they have this pattern of play now, where they just continually go yeah. left to right, left to right, switch, wait, try and probe, wait for their moment mm -hmm. in games. Um, but this one, this one could be an interesting one. St Johnson usually scupper mm -hmm. people's plans and, and and derail them. Yeah, I think this will be an interesting one. You're right. You know, St Johnson do have. Uh, 
uh, a knack of grinding out good results against the bigger sides. Uh, you're right about Celtic. I think Celtic are now in a sort of a European style of football, you know, a lot of possession, you know, and getting into that latter third and having that wee change of pace and taking their chance whenever it comes. And I think they had more chances in Aberdeen uh, and should have went on to score more goals. Yeah, I think the huge bonus for Celtic though is Kieran Tierney's back. I mean, he mentioned uh, today that he feels as if he's, you know, it's like making mm -hmm. his debut all over again, just back from injury. Looks as if he's never been mm -hmm. away. I mean, he just fitted straight back in yeah. again and he's a he's a real menace going forward. Yeah, not only a menace, Peter, he's delivery into the box. If you ask any striker, if you've got a fullback or a winger getting to that danger zone, if they can put quality balls into the box, good good strikers put them in the back of the net and that's what's happening and that's what happened against Aberdeen. Real quality balls in, balls that defenders don't know when to defend and attackers just attack them and just nine times out of ten score goals. Yeah, uh, and of course getting uh, four players back training, you know, the likes of Armstrong, Dembele and there, Tom Rogic, which, uh, I mean, he disappeared mm -hmm. off the radar at one point, but he's back, um, you know, so that's another bonus for them. They just seem to have stronger options again in the back line. I'm, I'm curious to see how this Lee Griffiths story develops, mm -hmm. uh, Ruffy, because Gordon Strachan's already mentioned he doesn't want to comment on it, but obviously mm -hmm. I'll be looking and thinking, is that an option that will not be available to me come March? Well, I think, uh, as Brendan Rodgers has done with a few <coughs> players at the club, he's given them a wee tester. He's given them something to think about, you know, and, and nine times out of ten, most of them have reacted to any criticism. It remains to be seen whether Lee takes it on board. He took it on board the last time and we saw what kind of striker he was, 40, 40 goals in that season. So he really ne needs to have just get his head down and work as hard as everybody else. It's 28 games now. The run, as far as Brendan Rodgers is concerned, is all about going as long as they can with uh, victories now. Can you see St Johnson uh, suddenly coming up with something? I think they might be knocking on the door, but I, I still think with Celtic, with the players coming back that you've just said there, will be still too strong for them. But uh, I think it'll be a really exciting game. It'll be a great atmosphere. The stadium will be full. And I think Celtic will just nick that. OK, um, coming up after the break, uh, we'll be talking uh, Scotland. We'll be talking Hamden uh, in a bit for the Europa League and the Super Cup. And we'll also concentrate also on the rugby. Six nations, not only a, a great day and night out, but you get the rugby in between it as well. Um, that's all coming up. We'll hear from Vern Cotter very soon. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Sports Week. Alan Ruffy's alongside me, Peter Martin. Uh, join us tomorrow if you can, 2 o'clock. Uh, Peter and Ruffy's Saturday football show will keep you up to date with all four divisions in Scotland and look at the uh, Premier League in England as well. Um, now, Championship. We talked about Hibs and their uh, pursuit of the title. They're eight points clear at the uh, top of the division. Here are the fixtures. Uh, to look forward to the Martin, St Mirren, Falkirk, Dunfermline, Hibs are United, Queen of the South, Morton, and Dundee United against Wraith Rovers is the quarter past five kickoff. Um, the Martin, St Mirren is the part of a, a, a double header in the league for St Mirren. Um, it's just that both games huge. Mm -hmm. I, th I mean, I think if Jack could come out of those games with maybe four points minimum. Mm -hmm to give himself yeah. a feeling that they can catch Air United. I'm talking about maybe a point against the Barton and three against Air United. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be looking for more than that. I'm sure he'll be looking for six out of six. But Dumbarton have proved uh, this season, although a wee bit inconsistent, when they come up against the bigger sides, they roll their sleeves up and, and spoil the, the game by winning when you expect the bigger team to win. But for me, that game is the most important one. There, there are other ones, obviously Falkirk and Dunfermline, which will be, has got a lot of history behind it, but uh, I think we'll all be keeping our eyes on that score at Dumbarton. Yeah, and the reason I mention that is because you would e you would expect Hibs to defeat Air United, Ruffy, without preempting and again uh, dismissing what Air United have to offer, but you would expect Hibs to win that yeah. game. So suddenly, you know, the real incentive for St Mirren is to try and get, if they got mm -hmm. three points from it, you know, the next time you play, you're playing your United next, and suddenly mm. a seven-point gap, you know, could be reduced to one. Yeah, but I, I still think it's going to be a hard task. I think the best thing they could get into would be the playoff position, uh, and I think that's probably that be a target. And then after that, if they can get away from that, to even better. But I would think they'd have to uh, go on some kind of run. They're, they're running out of games, and they're going to come up against the likes of the teams that are going to be going for the the playoff places. The Falkirks, obviously Dundee United. 
So I think that these are the games they need to get three points. Yeah, I, I was talking to a few uh, journalists this morning and we were, we were just contemplating, you know, a possible manager of the year if it wasn't going to be Brendan Rodgers because I, I think the general consensus is going to win uh, any manager of the year was that are up there. But, um, you know, then we, we started talking about it. I mentioned Tommy Wright yesterday. Of course, Jim Duffy, yep. um, what he's achieved at Morton. If they, if they could get a win tomorrow, any more mm -hmm. slip-ups from Dundee United, and you're looking at Morton and thinking, second? Yeah, yeah well, I, I saw most of the game uh, last week against Air United. I uh, didn't understand most of it, you know, because it was, it was on Alba. Yeah. But I uh, got the gist of what was happening in the game, uh, and I thought they were impressive. I, I thought the front two were good. They're, they're playing at a really good pace. Air United's defence wasn't particularly good uh, that night, but not taking anything away from them. The season that they've had, and there always is a manager for the the championship gets thrown up there. Obviously, Neil Neil Lennon has a good cup run and wins the league. His name will be thrown into the hat as well. But all credit to Jim Duffy, you know, with the resources that they've got down at uh, Morton. I think he's brought in players wisely, players with experience and young players, and uh, I think it'd be super. For, for Morton if they could get into a playoff place. Yeah, OK. Um, let's have a look at League One. Uh, Ruffy, here are the fixtures on offer. Airdrie, Peterhead, Alloa against Livingston. Brecon City taking on Stennis Muir. Queen's Park, East Fife and Stranraer against Albion Rovers. Livingston uh, seem to be running away with it. The, they've got the experience there. They're, they're getting results. They're on a wee run just now. And I think they're the ones that uh, will win it quite easily. I think they'll run away with it. And it just remains to be seen who's in the playoff. OK, and here are the fixtures for League Two tomorrow. And again, when the goals hit the back of the net, we'll keep you right up to date with our broth against four for Berwick Rangers against Annan Cowdenbeath, Elgin City, Edinburgh City, Clyde and Stirling Albion against Montrose. Of course, uh, I don't think anybody's going to stop um, four for, but a broth maybe have a chance uh, tomorrow, Ruffy, of at least reducing yep. the gap. It could be interesting suddenly if it was only five points. Now yeah, and eight. yep, and I'm sure Dick uh, has got all the experience in the world again out of these divisions. Uh, yeah. I think if you ever... Do you think there's a wee bit of needle here with this one? No, this game? I think there will be. Oh. I think, uh, obviously, I don't think he left them in any uh, terrible circumstances, but you like when you go back to a club you've been at for a long time, it's always good to, to get a win. OK, uh, that's how it looks in all four divisions of Scotland. Just a couple of things quickly. Um, Gordon Strachan mentioned that he you know, fully expects to pick Scott Brown for the game uh, mm -hmm. against uh, Slovenia and then England in the summer. Um, so he, he hasn't had any word to say I'm no. retiring again. No, I think he's got to be positive in the whole situation. I would like to think there has been some dialogue between them now. I mean, Scott looks as if he's staying away from injury. Brendan Rodgers looks as if he's going to leave it to both him and Gordon Strachan, which is a good thing. So I think we need everybody, particularly for the next game coming up. And then after that, we can look at the group stages and see where we are. OK. Um, and Hamden, here's a thought for you. <coughs> Quick one. Hamden uh, would like to host the Europa League uh, final in 2019 or the Super Cup final. Yeah, well, I was at the night when Zidane scored. Uh, yeah. I thought the whole... The whole situation, everything that goes along with the security, everything, it was a spectacle for everybody. It was a super game to see, you know, stadium was bouncing. I would think we've had enough big games at Hamden to, to attract a cup, a cup final at the Europa Cup. Yep, OK, uh, fingers crossed on that. Just out of curiosity, when they eventually get round to 2020 and renegotiating for a national stadium, um, Hamden, in a short-term deal, could be the option. Um, there is also the suggestion that they'll be looking at building a new stadium in an area where it's easily accessible for everyone, um, which would cost a hefty figure, I, I would suggest to you. Or maybe short-term taking it around the clubs uh, that are already uh, involved in the Premiership in Scotland. I would agree with short term. Uh, I think we have three or four really good stadiums that could give a, a good atmosphere to an international game. I think we should have a national stadium, not only for football as well, but for other sports. <laughs> because if we travel about to other countries and we go into stadiums that are being built for certain occasions, that they're, they're excellent. They're, they're just great to be in. So why shouldn't we have one? Yep. Um, would you build another stadium? 
Not me personally, but I would, I'd be for it, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it might uh, take a few years. I was just about to say, I, I don't think the building trade would put up with you just showing <laughs> a, couple, a couple of minutes before they're ready to start work. Um, anyway, let's <laughs> switch codes. Um, in fact, one other little thing I've got your thoughts mm. on. Here's the Premier League games. We'll keep everyone up to date on Saturday in the Premier League. Um, Chelsea against Arsenal is a special one. Roughly half 12 kick-off for that one. Um, Arsenal cannot lose um, I'm dismissing them for the title yeah. anyway but that one's a must win yeah I think so uh, I think it's going to be a great game uh, it'll be a super game I think Chelsea have got all the big players to win big games and I think they will tomorrow as well ok to rugby if you get a chance to go to uh, a rugby match uh, especially an international in Edinburgh it's special never to be forgotten um, beforehand during, after, it's just a fantastic day out, Ruffy. Yeah, it is. Uh, I, I always say it's different from the, the football games. I don't know why. Uh, I think uh, everybody goes along there. The pubs are all jam-packed, even drink in the stadium. No trouble at all. And uh, I think everybody is expecting a, a, a big year this year for the Scottish team. Yeah, um, I think the general consensus is, can anyone stop England? Ireland might have a shout at that um, as they meet in the, the, the last set of fixtures. But tomorrow it is, of course, uh, Murrayfield first of all, and Scotland against Ireland, and Vern Cotter mentioning the players are just a little tense ahead of this one. Exciting start, Ireland at home. Ireland have just recently beaten the All Blacks. So we get the chance to measure ourselves against them, and then we go to a different opposition the week after. But this one is, um, you know, I, I, I can feel a nervousness within the group. Being a little bit nervous means that you're, uh, you're probably sharper and a little bit more on edge. And I think you need to be in the game. You need to be wary of the opposition. If you go uncomfortably, you're in a lot of trouble. OK, if he's going to leave this job at the end of the Six Nations, uh, I think if he starts off with a win against Ireland, suddenly it posts a sign of intent from his side. And uh, wouldn't it be great to, to finish off on a high? Yeah, if you're getting any big tournament, you want to win your first game, and you've been getting the opportunity at home. Uh, he, I think if he does leave, you know, I think he, he's taking Scottish rugby to another level. I think we are improving year on year, but it'd be nice if we could start with a win, and uh, and, and I think there's a good chance of that. Yeah, okay. England against France is the other fixture on the uh, Saturday. Eddie Jones' side uh, on a long unbeaten run, and I think the general view is, Ruffy, nobody's going to stop them in this championship from winning at what back to back Grand Slams. Yeah, it looks like it. They look really strong, uh, even in their warm up games. <coughs> just been running over the top of everybody and uh, unfortunately we've got to go down there which uh, I don't think we've won there for a long long time so we've got three home games and I think it's important you win them and then take that game whenever it comes. OK, um, thanks to Ruffy for uh, talking rugby. We'll need to get a weekend away at the, rug the rugby, well, Ruffy. Well, I actually know four guys who are going over to Cork to watch the Scotland game at home. Yeah, I don't think we'll be able to negotiate it that quickly, but nevertheless, uh, great to have uh, Leanne Dempster, the Hibernian Chief Executive, in here talking uh, about her club. Hopefully uh, you got a few interesting answers from the Chief Executive. Join us tomorrow on the programme. Um, uh, of course, Hugh McDonald will be with uh, Gordon Smith and Ruffy uh, taking us through four hours of football. And it all starts at two o'clock on STV. From Ruffy and myself, hopefully you've enjoyed watching the football show. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.